Hey everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. On today's episode, we're going to talk cold frames. So it's that time of year where we're getting very close to Halloween. And those of you that remember 1991, the blizzard, uh, if you're not prepared to get your uh, trees inside by Halloween, uh, you might be in trouble. I hope you're watching this before Halloween. If not, it's still a good thing to check out the cold frame. If not for this year, you'll get this uh, for next year and know what to do. So I have an old shelving system that I've turned into my cold frame, and I'm going to show you that today. First thing I'm going to do is go ahead and open it up for you to show you uh, what's inside. I guess before I do that though, just uh, head out to Menards, Home Depot, wherever you go get your lumber and building supplies and you're going to buy this uh, two inch, one and a half, two inch uh, pink insulation and uh, make your cold frame out of it. You can make a whole box just out of the pink insulation material, tape it on together and you're good to go. I happen to have had an old shelving system that I no longer use for anything else, getting kind of dirty, kept it in the garage, so I just thought I would wrap it with the pink insulation and I have a nice secure box for all my trees. So I have it going all the way around. I'm going to open it up for you now. We'll take a peek. So I just have a couple of bungee cords that are kind of holding up the two doors so they can open all the way up and I can have access to my cold frame. So inside are my shelves and I'm gonna give you a closer look at that. All right, so a quick little look at the inside of my cold frame with the shelves that I've recycled now uh, to put all my plants on. So as you can see, I have a, a white shelf system that has uh, six compartments in it. All my kids' toys were in there uh, a long time ago. And so I did a little bit of uh, reconstructing and took a little saw and just did a little bit of opening up of uh, the shelves so I could put taller trees in. I just kind of custom made it to what I needed. You do whatever you need for your trees, make it bigger, make it smaller, have a nice tall section, a couple short sections, and you're good to go. I wanted to keep the integrity of the shelf together, so what I did is I carved a big hole here, and I carved a big hole here, and I carved a big hole here. So air could flow and I could get more trees in. Especially here, I made this a tall section for some taller trees. And then also, on the front of this, I curved it out right here. I don't know how well you can see that, but I curved it here, I curved it here, so the air can kind of flow. I might even do more holes in the back at some point uh, if I don't think I'm getting enough airflow. A fan in here is gonna create most of the airflow, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. So as you can see down below, there's a layer on the cement floor in my garage. I have a layer on the bottom, and then I have a layer on both sides, and so, and, a and on top. And then what you can't see right now is there's a layer completely on the back side. So it completely wraps all the way around. This side over here looks too thick. I'll show you what that is right now. So getting a little bit closer look up of the cold frame, on the sides I have two layers of, uh, of the pink insulation. I have the inside layer and I have the outside layer. This side layer right here actually sticks out this way a little bit so I can close the door and have a nice gap. And then this little piece right here, which is only about the width of my hand, curves in right here. That piece is just glued on to keep any giraffes from coming in here and to get extra cold because we're really close to my garage door right here. So this is the garage door that leads into my garage and if there's any wind, any cold air, we don't want that to get in there. So I put that little piece on it as a little extra insulation piece. Goes all the way to the bottom and again, secures any air from getting in. So, so basically when it comes to the construction of the pink insulation, you're just gonna use some duct tape or some packaging tape. I use packaging tape. Uh, you don't have to use the tape that you're supposed to, by code, put this into your house for construction. I'm not constructing anything for code for uh, structural purposes or to heat my home. Uh, this is for our plants. So the best thing that I've used is packaging tape and it's uh, shiny and sparkly. You can't see it right now because I've closed, every, closed everything but it holds it together pretty good. So my packaging tape has stayed on real nice. On top, all I did is took some leftover lumber. I just have some lumber on. This is actually loose. This whole thing can shimmy right off. I just have a nice piece of, uh, actually it's a one by three, or two by three, a couple extra uh, one by threes here that I just put a hinge on. I just went to the store and got a hinge, and I hinge these two pieces of wood together. This one's in the out position, and this one's down. 
and that allows me just to have access to my inside of my cold frame. And I happen to have some bungee cords in my garage. I hold it up. Uh, it holds it up just enough for me to get into my trees. So this, for me, was my doorway. Some people will just cut their front in half, tape it onto the side, and just swing it open and swing it closed. I just figured this top would be able to open it up better, and I'd be able to have a lot better access. Because one of the problems people have with their cold frames is they don't have access to it. It's hard to get to. Some people put them buried into the ground. You can keep it into the ground, put a cover on there. But if your cold frame's outside, a lot of people end up having issues with critters, especially those mice getting anywhere and chewing up your trees. So if you have to do this outside, I would still enclose all of it if you could, above ground, on the side of your garage if you could. I keep it in my garage. It's an attached garage, but it's not a heated garage. This insulation will keep it nice and cozy with the heater, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So you're just going to construct it, put it all together, but make sure the access is good. For me, I can open these up and I can get in here and I can water all different levels of water. I can pull things out and have access to my trees. If cold frames get really full of stuff, it's hard to reach trees and you have a tough time with the watering process. So again, we'll get to some of those uh, uh, watering things in a little bit. But for right now, there's my cold frame. Again, one and a half to two inch purple pink insulation all the way around it and we're good to go. Before I put my trees in here though, I want to make sure that it's clean. And so I'm going to get a little bit of bleach and some water here and we're going to wipe these walls down and make sure it's clean from the summer sitting here. Uh, we don't want any fungus or critters or anything to hurt our trees. So I'm going to bleach it up a little bit and we'll do that and then we'll get back to talking to you in just a flash. done, a little bleach job to kill anything that's in there. we got a nice clean unit ready to go for the trees here in a couple of weeks. And I'll put a couple in later just to show you how it fits into my cold frame. But let's talk about a few things that go into the cold frame before you put the trees into the cold frame. I have my little uh, electronic thermostat. Uh, nice, works, Keep, gives me some accurate readings. Um, some people uh, in the Minnesota Bonsai Society Club will have uh, the uh, fancy thermometers that will speak to their cell phones, go into their house and tell, it, tell you the degrees. So you can have it at your bedside and an alarm can go off to say, hey, your trees are too cold or your trees are too warm uh, in the cold frame. I haven't gotten that high tech yet, but uh, I'm looking forward to maybe doing that. Maybe a Christmas item. I'll ask for that for Christmas. In the meantime, I come out here, take a peek, and it looks like it's maintaining its temperature. So I'm always looking to make sure that we are at a certain temperature. So the next thing I want to show you is the power source. My power source comes in here. Uh, of course, an extension cord leading to my thermostat regulated power source. So I got this one at Menards. And all this is going to be is, is going to tell you um, how, uh, when to turn on the heat and when to keep the heat off. Because we don't want the temperature in here too high. So I have it set right now uh, just a notch above 20 degrees, 25 or so degrees. That allowed the uh, cold frame to stay at a comfortable 35 to 40 degrees. So you're going to have to adjust this knob based on your cold frame and what your temperature is telling you. So I keep hovering between 20 and 30 degrees on this unit, which kicks on the heater to keep this at 35 to 40 degrees. So where I have that is in my middle lower section on a little nail. And it's just hanging in there away from the bulk of my plants and a bulk from uh, any water dripping down when I water plants. Uh, it's in a nice protected area. So I have that there. And then I have just a little porcelain heater. So this is a really small heater that has a fan in it as well. So when it does kick in, it does blow the air. I keep my heat source over here. And I tuck in all my cables. And I typically don't have any plants over in this right side. So my heat source is way over here. And when it kicks on at the right temperature, it kicks and blows air this way. And then now this year, I'm going to add a fan. So last year I had no fan, my plants did pretty good, but I'm going to add a fan in here at the, one of the levels and that will kick on every half hour or so with a timer and circulate the air. Because you want to make sure that the air is circulating around and not one area gets super hot and one area stays cold. Heat's going to rise a little bit of course, but the fan will help keep regulating that heat source for your plants and they won't be damaged. So I'm back with a couple of my trees. So I have a Hanoki Cypress that I have, uh, I'm going to put this actually over here. 
And then I also have a Suzuki Azalea, which is quite large. It's going to probably take up this whole space. I don't even have the tag off of this one from Brussels. I got this one down in Brussels this year uh, in the uh, late summer. And so my trees are going to fit in here. Now I have a couple other small ones that of course I can place around this tree. I just want to make sure it has uh, room where it's not getting smushed and it's just going to be taken care of. And of course again the heat's going to regulate hopefully and blow around here. So the big trouble with most cold frames again is accessibility. If you can't get in to water your trees because you still have to water them, it's going to be hard. A lot of my watering source inside in my plant room and out here in the garage is old recycled juice containers and I drill holes at the top. I've shared that before and I use that to water. Now I can go ahead and just shoot it in there and get some good water into my Suzuki Azalea. Now I'm dripping some water here and the water is going to pool here a little bit. I don't want it to get into my electrical system so I want to make sure that I'm keeping it uh, uh, not too uh, watery dripping all over the place. So typically what we're going to do is we're going to put some kind of uh, tray underneath here and protect it from all the leaking. So what I've used in the past is just your garden variety uh, tray that you can buy for any uh, pot and a variety of sizes. And I'll put that underneath and it's got some fish tank rock actually in there to give a little rock for kind of a thicker soil. And now when I go ahead and water this, I'm going to get all the water in there so it's balanced and then the fuller my uh, juice bottle is, the easier it is to water and I'm happy right now and it's going to drip into this tray right here and settle in here. Um, I know when this starts to get wet that the water is soaking all the way through and I'm, I'm good to go. Now in the winter months when it's uh, close to that freezing mark, the water wouldn't go through. So that's why we keep our uh, cold frame at about 35 to 40 degrees so it doesn't freeze solid and the water can get through and penetrate and then drain out. So there's my Satsuki. I would do the same thing with this guy over here with another tray. Uh, and you can also use a boot tray. So if your, if your cold frame is uh, big enough, mine isn't for this boot tray, so I would have to make some adjustments. But you have a typical boot tray, again, you can get at any home goods store, and you can put your boot tray or something like it in here. Well, my shelving system is too narrow for me to put a boot tray in here. Um, and I don't want to cut it, of course, because then the water would leak. But as an example, you can use these grates. These are just uh, for your typical lights in office buildings and schools. These are grates that you can custom make to any size you want. And you're going to put the grate inside your shoe tray. And so that keeps your uh, pot off of, off of uh, the ground surface and raised a little bit so it's not just sitting in water. So if I were to put this tree right here, it's sitting on the white uh, great and it's not touching the boot tray. Great. So this allows you to uh, water the plant without a lot of it leaking. And so I'm, I would find a smaller tray or some kind of box or I would use one of these and this grading system, another way for you not to have this just sitting in water in the middle of winter. Again, keeping it at 35 to 40 degrees, these plants are going to do great in here. So I've got a couple trees from my backyard just to give you an example of what I might do with this cold frame with some taller trees. Now this tree, this is a blue arrow juniper, and uh, showed this one on a video several months ago, repotted it, and did very little styling in the beginning. I have added some wire to pull down some of the branches, and as you can see, the trees are naturally growing up towards the sun, so as these branches thicken up and get some more pads out on the ends, uh, this tree will slowly start to take shape. But it's a really tall tree, and it would barely fit in here. This would have to bend over, but it would fit in here. And the only reason why I put this juniper in, because this is Minnesota hardy, it would last outside in the cold winter, but I have a pot here that's not Minnesota hardy. This pot has a ridge line inside here, and if this is really full up to the brim with my soil, and this were to do any swelling with the watering, uh, with any of the uh, ice as it formed, swelled up, we could crack this pot. So if I wanted to store this one in the cold frame, I'd be perfectly fine to do so, because the tree would still go dormant. We want them to go dormant for at least six weeks in the winter, this could go dormant but still stay at that 35 to 40 degree range, not create any damage with the pot. Now the problem with this pot is I can't fit it in because of this right here. I drilled a hole here but I still have this in front. So this year I might just cut the rest of this off and have a nice easy axis to push my tree in here. I don't think I'll put this one in here right now, but uh, that's one solution that I would have. The other solution of course is I could, I could wrap all the soil in here with some saran. I have some saran tape from some air layering that I've done. I could keep all the soil in and then I could tip this tree in down like this and scoop it up inside and put it in there. 
and we'd make it fit. So you just have to make it work for you, whatever trees you have. So we're gonna put this one aside. I do have the air laying results from earlier this year. I air layered this uh, Trident maple, uh, excuse me, Japanese maple. And this Japanese maple was the top part of uh, the, the big tree. We air layered it and put it right into this pot. I've been watering all summer long. It's looking a little scraggly here, but still alive and doing well. And this one is too tall to fit right here. Too, too tall. It's too tall to fit right there without bumping into the, 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 the top shelf. So again, if I were to put this one in the cold frame, which I have to do this year, I'm going to put it right in there. It's going to sit in there, and I have plenty of height. So again, I custom made this to fit some of my trees, and I will probably open this one up more so this can be my tall section, and this will be my small section. So that does it for the cold frame. A couple more things I want to remind you of as I close up my doors and uh, close up uh, all these plants inside. Don't put them in here too soon though. If we got some uh, more weather that's going to be conducive to having uh, trees outside, keep them out there as long as possible. You really want to get a couple of good hard freezes before you bring them in. We get there below 32 a couple days and the trees are going to be in good shape. So I'm going to close this up. I'm going to use some of my lava rock to keep this nice and tight. Um, a critter could possibly get in there. We might see some mice in there. I have not had a problem yet, so hopefully they'll stay out this year too. Um, and keep in mind that you're going to water this thing again a couple of times uh, throughout the month, so make sure you're checking for water and making sure everything's okay in there and the, the, the temperature's okay, the uh, power source is on there, the fan's working, and you're going to be good. Before you put your trees in here, remember to make sure that all the leaves, or as many as possible, are off of the trees. So you saw me put all these uh, plants in here, the ones that lose leaves, the deciduous varieties, make sure all those leaves fall off and don't get a big pile on the bottom so when you water, you invite fungus, uh, that kind of developing uh, stuff. We don't want that. So make sure that the leaves, the deciduous ones, are losing all of their uh, leaves and it's a nice clean environment in there. All right, so a couple of updates for you. I just showed you moments ago the uh, Blue Arrow Juniper. So I'm gonna show you that a little bit closer up tall tree but uh, from the bottom this one did tip over in a windstorm this year once but this is what it looks like after a summer of rejuvenation the wiring has put some branches down as I mentioned earlier you got some branches that naturally want to grow on up so so this is the blue arrow juniper juniper one of my local uh, nursery azaleas. Just want to show you this one for the nice fall colors. So it's nice uh, in Minnesota and we get some of our trees to change color. So uh, some nice reds, uh, almost a burgundy color on, on these leaves. And uh, we'll hope to see some beautiful flowers in the springtime. So this is one of my azaleas. Getting some nice color, just like it for the color. Young tree, not worked on it too terribly much, just hoping to get it healthy. And then uh, I do have a couple of uh, plastic trainer pots with some uh, dwarf fire bushes in there to start working on some fire bush bonsai. So again, nothing like seeing some pretty colors in the fall. So we got this guy right here, one of my fire bushes turning red. So there's a quick little update, a couple of my trees. I appreciate you watching. So for today's bonsai, I'm Dave Weiss and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks.